Howard Gibner, and this class is pricing, how and how much to charge. You could have the most visually stunning events, the most truly satisfied clients, and the most enthusiastic staff, but at the end of the year, if you don't have your pricing figured out, you could be losing money hand over fist, and it's only a matter of time before you go out of business. And the truth is, as planners of events, few of us are drawn to this industry because of our love of math or finance. And if we spend even a fraction of the time we spend creating these amazing events on our pricing models and our finances, all of our businesses would be in much better shape. In this class, we're going to go over all the various pricing models that most planners use. We'll talk about how they work, I'll go over the pros and cons of them, and I'll give some pieces of advice for each one. We'll then talk about how to calculate your rates based on a variety of different methods. And then I'll share with you the results of a nationwide survey we did of over 100 planners around the country who answered questions about how they charge and how much they charge. And then finally, I'll talk about the importance of transparency and value. Those two things are critical regardless of which model you choose, and I'll explain why. A few points about choosing the right model. First is, there's no right model. Second thing is, most planners don't really know whether they're choosing a model that works for them. So if that's you, don't feel bad. In fact, I ran a panel at a conference a number of years ago where one of my panelists was a woman who ran a boutique fundraising company. She did phenomenal fundraising events. And in advance of the panel, I asked her how she charged, and she told me hourly. And then I asked her how much. She said somewhere between 50 and 150 an hour, which was an enormous range. But the real kicker was, when I asked her how she came up with those numbers, she said, honestly, I have no idea. They just felt right. So here's an expert who's giving a class, and she has no idea how she came up with the model that she chose. There are three key requirements that must be satisfied, whatever model you choose. Number one, it needs to be profitable for you and your business. If you're not making money, it's a non-starter. Number two, it needs to be something that works for your client, or at least the majority of your clients. It could work for you, but if it doesn't work for them, again, you're not going to be successful. And the third is it's got to be somewhat in line with your competitors. And you have to be prepared to explain why you're higher than your competitors if that's the case. So it's got to work for you, it's got to work for your clients, and it's got to be in line with the marketplace. I'll also say that it's okay to choose more than one model. And as we'll see in the survey, a number of planners do. They use different combinations. And to take it even a step further, you can even ask your client how you charge. When we get to the transparency and the value part, if you know the value of your services, there should be no difference in asking a client how they want to pay you or how you want to be compensated as opposed to just saying, hey, do you want to pay with MasterCard or Visa? Most pricing models tend to fall into two categories, what we call itemized fees and non-itemized fees. When I say itemized fees, I'm talking about a fee structure where you and the client can point to a line item on a piece of paper, a proposal, a contract, what have you, clearly says money that's being paid to you. Uh, there are several types of itemized fees. There are what we would call project-based fees or flat fees, which is a lump sum for producing an event. There are time-based fees which is typically hourly or daily, but it could be monthly, weekly, et cetera, where you're being paid for your time. And then finally, there are budget-based fees, which is the equivalent of a percentage of the budget. Uh, again, it's itemized. It's not based on time. It's not based on work. It's based on the size of the budget. But all three of those are itemized fees. Non-itemized fees, by nature, on the other hand, are uh, pricing models where the client is not clear exactly how and how much money you're making. The first type is markups, which is basically the difference between a wholesale price and a retail price. So if you rent a chair for $30 and you sell it for $40 to the client, that's your markup. Uh, you may decide to disclose that to the client or not, but by nature that's a non-itemized fee. The other major non-itemized fee is a commission. So if the client pays a caterer $1,000 and the caterer gives you a commission of 10% back, that's the second type of non-itemized fee. And again, as I said earlier, people can use combinations of different types of fees. So the first question in our survey was, what is the primary pricing model that you use? And as you can see on the survey, the number one answer by an overwhelming margin, 61.4%, was a flat or a project fee. Coming in distant second was an hourly or daily fee at 16.8%. And then a fee as a percentage of budget was 11.9%. 
Those three are all itemized fees. And if you add them all up together, it's roughly around 90%. So in this example, 90% of the people are disclosing their fee structure to the client. Uh, markups came in at a little under 9%, and commissions 1%. And again, this is as a primary way of making money. And as we'll see later, even though 1% use commissions as the primary way, uh, close to a third of people actually do accept commissions, presumably as a secondary method.